So we're here with Dan Stewart, who's the Managing Director of Living Social Middle East. He co-founded GoNabit in June 2010, the first group buying website in the Middle East. Uh, prior to that, Dan was the Chief Possibility Officer at Bayet. He's coming to talk to us about everything mobile. So just for an overview, Dan, when people talk to you, when you talk to people about mobility today, about everything mobile, what does it mean to you and how do you describe everything mobile to people who might not actually be particularly technically minded? Mm. How could you sum that up? Um, you know, I think uh, in the context of what we do, you know, it's really an extension. I guess on one hand it's an extension of what we do online. So I mean, from a website perspective, you know, I'll talk about us and then in general. So what we do is, you know, we essentially bring local, you know, potential buyers or people together with local merchants, right? And so people are are, are, are paying to, to, to go experience local businesses, products, services, spas, salons, activities, wakeboarding to you know, restaurants and everything in between. So um, for us mobile is in, on one hand is an extension of that platform, but I guess you could almost use it as a replace, replacement for that platform because what we're seeing is, is that you can come on the, the mobile app that we have, you can transact and you can you know, go and use that product you've purchased without ever even visiting the website. So I think it's about creating like kind of real mobile experiences. I mean, you know, we, um, we look at an opportunity in collecting, you know, this connection that we're, that we're building together between, you know, buyers and merchants. The mobile is, a, is another way to do that. And uh, there's some things which are, again, a replication of what happens on the web. There's some things which are, you know, unique to mobile. And so um, I think in general, um, I think it's a question of is, how many more things can we do that are being, I think right now you're gonna see things that are on the web moving to mobile and then things that are mobile only. So like I said, you know, there's some things that we port from the web to mobile and some things which will only remain on mobile, which have never been possible from like a, a kind of a fixed position computer, you know? So, um, you know, I think it's really those kind of two avenues where it's not just a limiting, you know, but it's really opened up a new possibility, so. A whole new world in yeah. and techno technology. Yeah. With, with GoNabbit, you started that in June 2010. 13 months later, it was sold and became Living Social Middle East. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit more exactly what you're doing, what you're offering, yeah. and uh, you know, why, why people should know about it? Sure. So basically what we do is we give people a way to do more without necessarily spending more in their local city. Um, you come on our website every day. Um, you don't know what it's going to be until you're on the website or you get the email in the morning. So there's that discovery aspect. And what you'll see is a local business Typically, a service-based business. Again, your your fitness, your health and beauty, your your food and beverage, your hospitality, and it's going to be you know something new to try or a place to go back to again, at a 50% or more discount. Why? Because we're asking you to change your behavior. We're asking you to try a new place. We're asking you to go experience a place or go back to a place you haven't been back to for a while or take someone with you, and we're incentivizing that behavior change through price, right? And so, basically, what you're doing is you're paying up front and making a financial commitment to try out that business. Once you're at that business, the business has a great opportunity to win you back as a, you know, as a loyal customer. And you've had kind of a, a low risk way to try them out you know, as, a, as a consumer. And so we try to present opportunities. You know, we try to present discovery you know, for people every day. We try to, for merchants, we put them in front of a captive audience. Um, and so with GoNabit, we launched in Dubai, then in Abu Dhabi, and then in uh, Jordan, and Egypt, and in Lebanon. And so it was very different in every place. You know? So the core model was the same, but the demographics are very different. The, I mean, we take payments online. So, I mean, the ability to take payments online was one of the biggest hurdles we had to overcome as a business. And um, I think it's one of the things we did the best job with. And it really built a case for e-commerce. And um, I'd like to think that, you know, people that are starting e-commerce businesses now, and not just, you know, for offline payments and cash payments, but actually credit card transactions through a website, I'd actually like to think, you know, we did a lot to show that you could create a viable business out of that, you know. And so, um, even when we were having discussions with, um, international companies about potentially investing or acquiring our business, um, the fact that we were doing what they're doing, taking credit cards through our website, made the numbers that we operated at more easily understandable because it was the same kind of way of doing business that they were used to. Um, if we had been doing something very different, there would have been you know, a bit more translation that would have to go on in terms of, uh, you know, you know, is what we had built at the same value because you'd have to try to think about it through a different lens, I guess. You know, but, you know, credit card business um, was very understandable for international businesses. Indeed. 
And in terms of the Middle East, you've done a lot of business in the Middle East. You've done a lot of um, mobile and e-commerce, mm. as you said. Yeah. What are some of the greatest obstacles facing that line of work, or that kind of business mm. environment within the Middle East? Yeah, I think you know when we first launched, it wasn't that we were carving out a niche of a larger market. It wasn't that we were uh, piggybacking off of other like momentum that existed in e-commerce. What we were doing is we're essentially we were creating a market. You know, so when we launched as a business, it wasn't saying, here's why we're great at what we do for you, and here's the benefit to you as a buyer. It's, here's e-commerce. So here's why this is a product you might want at a price you want to pay. But also, here's why you'd want to buy it online. And if you want to buy it online, here's how to go about buying it online. And there was that whole kind of selling an ecosystem and selling a process, not just selling a product. So I guess it made communication a bit more challenging, made communication a bit more lengthy. I guess the upside was is that we, we owned that conversation because nobody else was there to, to be involved in it. It meant that we had you know, higher touch points with customers and with merchants. And the same thing with mobile is that you know, we're one of the few, if only, uh, companies in the Middle East that's actually letting people purchase something through a mobile application. You know? um, and so because of that, uh, it's, again, it's not like this. there's this tidal wave of this going on that you're riding the flow of is you're having to create a market. You're trying to create behaviors, right? And so, um, again, a lot of it goes back to communication. A lot of it goes behavior change. I mean, people in this re you know, people in the Middle East and the countries that we operate aren't used to pulling out their phone to, to look for something to buy and buying it, right? So that whole activity, it's not a matter of that activity going on and then us wanting to be in that place that they see. It's just even creating that behavior, right? And so um, we're kind of used to being the first in a lot of different things that we've done, and I'm happy to be the first in more things. And, Hopefully the second and the third and the fourth do well at it too, you know, and that it, um, it's the first of uh, a lot of successful businesses that really kind of benefit, you know, and make, make people's lives better, but, you know, make them, if, if it's more enjoyable or more connected or something, more of something, right, in a positive sense. All right, fantastic. So can you talk to us a little bit about Living Social's expansion strategy mm -hmm. moving forward? What's sure. ahead for Living Social? And also, mm -hmm. when can we expect to be seeing more of li or some of Living Social in Qatar? Mm -hmm. When are you going to bring your products to our to your mm -hmm. service and uh, facility sure. to, to our shores? Um, in terms of you know what the I guess the year ahead looks for looks like for us, um, you know we have our core business. Our core business is these local deals that we that we operate with, primarily service based businesses, and we're going to continue to expand on the core and the markets that we're in, obviously. Um, we also have a very healthy travel business. Um, we also do things like we have family-oriented deals as well, which is a bit different niche that we operate and focus on. Um, we're also getting into things like product-specific deals. So instead of selling a service, but actually selling products, and it fits for uh, you know certain types of products, uh, certain parts of their time in their life cycle. Um, and then what we're looking at too is you know, looking for more ways to really number one connect buyers with local merchants. I mean, you know. If you said, where do you go online to connect with your friends? You know, Facebook. Where do you go online to, I don't know, watch videos on YouTube? There's no real default kind of place to go online and connect with merchants, and especially not um, in you know, the markets where we, we all live and operate. And so um, you know, our goal is to continue to do more of what we're doing to become that default answer for where do I go online to connect with merchants. So we'll bring in a few new things to bear in terms of that. And then in terms of new market expansion, you know, we're, we're looking at markets that, like any business, can bear a return. You know? um, some of the markets in the region are kind of like single city markets, and so you know we're looking and, and constantly assessing like expansion opportunities. Qatar is definitely something that we've we've spoken about, um, and actually you know it's actually a good forum for me to maybe explore a few conversations in terms of you know um, ways to take that to the next step and make that possible. So. Well, I hope you keep us informed at ICT Qatar of what you are planning in the region, and thank you very much for coming and over. Thanks, my and pleasure. Part of the conference. Thank Great. you. Thank you.